Philippe Val from La Poste. Merci. Bonne chance. Hello to everybody. Firstly, just to tell you that it is a great pleasure and also an honor for me to speak in this uh, Viva Technology event. Tech for Good, you know, is clearly an inspiring motto. It is inspiring me to think about our business, to think about our development, to think about on technology, and also to think about all the facets of what we are calling and sharing as the digital miracle. What I will like to do with you today is to question the convenience created by technology and the price we have to pay for it. Technology successes are clearly linked to convenience. To say that in other words, beyond our fascination for technological discovery, technology is successful because it is providing lower cost and convenience. Digital revolution progresses our activity. It is progressing because it is creating for us and for mankind more convenience and lower price. More convenience, this does mean that technologies are really simplifying our life. I will give three very short examples of that to make the reasoning happening. First example, hiring a driver in the big city today has become easier and cheaper. That explains Uber success when we consider Uber success as the number of people who are using Uber, we are not considering as success their actual level of profit. But it is a success. It is creating convenience. Second source of convenience, we can order very simply and for a low cost products everywhere in the world. We can shop in Shanghai, in New York, in Paris, as we were living in those cities. And that is creating a fantastic, fantastic convenience. Convenience does exist also through permanent, quick, and free delivery. And thanks to the digital platform, Thanks to the logistic operator, including La Poste and its subsidiaries in the world, we are able to be delivered everywhere, every day, and very rapidly. This is also an important convenience, and this convenience, this simplicity, explains that we could be addicted to those digital services. So we really like technology because technology is bringing us, producing us a lot of convenience and simplicity in our life. However, and that is my second point. There are always two sides to every coin. We can, and I think we have, to think 
on the other side of the digital revolution. We have to think about the dark side of the digital revolution. And the dark side is to share together what is the price that each of you, that me, that we are paying for these technological convenience. What is the price? First example, the platform economy is not only stimulating old protected sectors. You just had an example before. They are not only changing the rules of business. They are not only creating innovation. They are also often creating dark side effect as unfair competition and destruction of jobs. Second point, there is paradoxically a price for the free services. When you are accepting, when you are using, when you are loving free services, in fact, you know that in your heart, you know it implicitly, they are not free. You are paying a price. What is this price? This price, when you have a free service offer, is a huge pressure on wages and on the level of worker protection and on the level of human work salaries. That is the price that you are paying, in fact. Third example, the ability to order products from everywhere in the world. As I told you, we are ordering products coming from Shanghai, Singapore, Kigali, Paris, New York. We are ordering it. But this ability to order and to get delivered has a significant impact in terms of transportation and in terms of carbon's impact. It is contributing to climate change and to the global warming. This is the price. And at the same time, and I don't know in which big cities you are living in, the growing flow of delivering, the growing flow of cars, drivers, trucks, delivering parcel everywhere, every day in the world, is creating major congestion, major pollution for the cities. Just give an example. The growth of parcels delivery is in Europe by a double digit number, 10%. It is more in the emerging world, which does mean that the number of flows and of vehicles will be doubled in the coming seven years. Twice more vehicle in the big cities where you are living in in the seven coming years. This is creating traffic jam. This is creating congestion. This is creating also pollution. And this is also another price to the convenience. These three examples are not making me a pessimist. I think, optimistically, that there are solutions to these issues, provided the fact that we are really looking for those solutions. 
I can see today three types of solutions to work on this dark side. The first solution is to measure the technology impacts. Once we have a new technology, once we adopt a new technology, we have to measure the impact on the planet, on the social working, on the whole society, including the negative effects of those technology. This is also a mean, and I am saying some, that in front of technology lovers, of not being technological naive. The second point is after having measured the impact of technology is to promote regulation. Regulation is the best way to be sure that the disruption that we, that you are creating, is not destroying a fair competition. Clearly, disruption is very useful. Disruption is challenging the incumbent. For instance, as La Poste is now delivering letters and parcels for more than five centuries, we are stimulated by disruptors, start-uppers, and by competition, clearly. So disruption has very, very positive effects. At the same time, disruption is creating fake competition. Fake competition because that are creating some monopoly or monopsony situation in which the competition is no longer fair and efficient. On two issues, clearly some actors don't respect taxation rules or social worker condition, and this is clearly creating an issue. So the regulation is a good way to reduce the price of convenience and is a good way to install a real competition. A real competition, which is that everybody is starting the race on the same line, not with taxation rate huge for the one, nil for the other, or social condition for workers strictly different and usually different in the competition. This point is obviously very important because the competition is creating improvement and social progress. It is, if it, it is really a fair competition. To measure the technology impacts, to regulate the competition and to preserve the competition against the new monopolies. My third solution is to invest in wisdom. It should be a surprise to you because the most logical solution is to invest in education. But I think that we should be more demanding for ourselves. We have to invest in wisdom. Why? I would for answer this question to refer to a first book. This book, written in 1970, is named The Power and the Wisdom. It has been written by a French sociologist named George Friedman, and its pitch is very clear. The pitch is the following one. Technologies which does mean ourselves are producing more power. We are empowering mankind. We are giving more power to individuals, to companies, to state. 
more power, but at the same time, the same level of wisdom. More power, same wisdom, does mean more risk for the society and for mankind. So if we really want to promote tech for good, we need to promote investment in wisdom and try to educate our workers, our partners, our people, the whole society to be in the direction of wisdom and to have an inclusive approach. This is also the case reaching, targeting the common goods with data's privacy and protection. Some words on that. This is today a hot topic. As this topic is a hot topic, thanks to Cambridge Analytica experience. I think that thanks to Cambridge Analytica, all of us, we are opening our eyes, clearly. To think about data protection, I would like to refer to another book, a very old and French other book. This book has been written in the 16th century. It does mean 400 years ago. He was written by an 18-year-old Frenchman. He would have passed today as a startup. We would have said today that Etienne de la Boétie, it is his name, is a youngster, a talented startup. He was not startup. He was a philosopher and a writer. And he wrote a fantastic speech, which is the discourse on voluntary servitude. Etienne de la Boétie is very useful for today, very useful to everybody in this room from my point of view. Etienne la is saying a very simple thing. For his time, his reasoning was the following one. As human beings, we are the only one to blame if we accept political tyranny. At his time, the issue for mankind was political tyranny. And Etienne de la Boissy said, you can't only blame yourself. If I am transposing Etienne de la Boissy's work in our time, I would like to tell you that we are together the only one to blame if we accept the misuse of our personal data the massive planned obsolescence of tools or the extended waste of nature, nature resources. That is his message. He wrote this excellent text in 1548. If I can conclude with an advice to you, is to advise you to read this uh, English translated text, which is a very short one, and which is for all mankind very simple. We are in charge of our own life. We are taking responsibility for our own society and for our own workers. We are taking responsibility on what we are accepting and what we are not accepting. We are in the possibility, in the situation, to choose or not to choose voluntary servitude. That was right for political things, that was right for political tyranny, 
that is also right for what we are living today in terms of technology convenience. So, if we are sincerely promoting the common good, if we are believer in tech for good, I think that we have to listen to Etienne de la Boétie and his real will to refuse what could be our voluntary servitude. We are acting for that. Acting for the common good is, from my point of view, in the society and in the business, choosing to refuse voluntary servitude. And I ask you to do the same. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you very much.